How do we go about setting a marketing budget? Well, the first thing to bear in mind is, let's think about how is the marketing supposed to work on a big macro level, at, at a very top line level, how is it supposed to work? So what I've got here is marketing spend on the x-axis, sales on the y-axis, and typically we're going to see an S-shaped response function. Okay? So if we spend nothing on marketing, we still have some sales. Just there. All right? You're not going to see zero sales. You're going to have a base level of sales. If we spend one euro on marketing, there's nothing much you can do with that. So it's quite flat. And the, uh, so the southwest part of that curve is quite flat. As you spend more, you get increasing returns. And then finally, there's only so much market share you can buy through marketing. You're going to hit saturation point. Knowing the shape and nature of this curve is what the finance director wants to know. If you can, with your marketing plan, say, look, marketing is not a static number. It's not a proportion of sales that we're going to put into the plan here. It's actually a flexible number that affects the top line revenue. <laughs> right? it's, a, it's a variable that affects top line revenue. Think of marketing as a variable as an input to driving top line, not something that is set by the expectations of top line. Okay? If you have a marketing response function that is S-shaped, you basically know, as you change your marketing investment, as you ramp it up or ramp it down, what's going to happen to sales. And what the finance director wants to know is this. This concept of financial contribution, he's actually not interested in ROI. He's interested in pure cash coming into the business, less the marketing spent. Okay? ROI is a ratio, it's an interesting ratio, but the finance guys want to know what is financial contribution. The definition of financial contribution is the total sales you make, top graph, multiplied by the margin you make on a sale, that's the profit to the business, minus the marketing investment. Okay, so your profit you make from your marketing minus the marketing investment, that's the pure net cash left in the business. That's what he wants to know. And <coughs> how does financial contribution change with different levels of marketing investment? Well, it initially goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down again. This here, the peak of that, that's your optimal budget. If you can say to your finance director, look, I've done my anal analysis, this is what's going to do to happening to financial contribution. Uh, that's how I set my marketing budget. There's also a minimum spend. The minimum spend on that graph is, if I spend less than a certain amount, I'm better off spending nothing. Yeah? Because financial contribution, you're, you're indifferent between spending that minimum amount or spending nothing. Here are some interesting numbers. In the UK, and I don't know about Ireland, but I suspect it's the same. In the UK, 6% of brands are to the right-hand side of that optimal point. They're overspending. 6% of brands, the advice to those brands would be, cut your budget. <coughs> Something like 14% of brands are underspending. They're spending less than the minimum. That's the worst place to be. You're just burning money if you're left to the left of that minimum spend. Just burning money. What the advice to those brands is, spend nothing at all or get to that minimum point. You're not getting cut through. 80% of brands, especially when you look at the long-term effects, are in that space between the minimum and the maximum. There is an opportunity to spend more done the right way and realize more on the bottom line of the business. Okay? So the crucial thing here is, now unfortunately, our marketing fraternity haven't got the analytics in place to present these numbers <coughs> and have a grown-up discussion about P&Ls with the finance people. But I hope this type of analysis will push this agenda. Okay? So that's the budget setting piece. The second thing I want to talk about is the long-run effects and base erosion. Wiley Coyote, he's famous here, right? You guys know who Wiley Coyote is. He chases the roadrunner. And the Wiley Coyote effect in marketing is a very important principle. It's a very important principle. Have you noticed what happens when Wiley Coyote runs off a cliff? What happens? Right. He keeps going. He keeps going. And it's only after a while does he realize there's nothing supporting him, and then he falls. That's exactly the same with marketing. It's exactly the same. So here's a piece of long-run modeling we've done for a brand. What you see here is that 
your actual market share is what we've observed over time. That's the blue line. So using the model, we went back in time and said, what would happen if you spent nothing around, uh, across this period? Actually, in year one, in 2007, if you cut the budget, and this is very similar to your slide, nothing much happens. You don't actually lose that much market share. Similarly, in year two, not much difference between the actual with spend and the scenario with no spend. It's only in year three in this brand does the Wile E. Coyote effect take over, this gravity take hold of Wile E. Coyote, this gravity take away you know, what's supporting the brand, and you see baseline erosion happening. So the problem with looking at a one-year P&L is you cut your budget, you're making more money on the bottom line of the business. You do it in year two, possibly you're still making more money. But if you extend that to year three, oh dear, gravity has taken over Wile E. Coyote, he has lost market share, it's going to be a lot more difficult now to build that brand up. So what we're hopefully advocating is looking at a business over two to three years and really addressing how marketing is working in the long run. Okay? So that's, uh, that's the Wiley Coyote effect. You won't find it in Kotler, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe in your new book. Yeah.